today we're going to walk through how to build an asynchronous login screen with Ionic 2. Uh, so quite often when you're building a mobile application you'll have a login screen and you'll have your main page and usually what you want to do is if somebody has already logged into your application before and you have some way of checking that authentication you don't want to send them to the login screen again when they open your app say for the second time you want to send them straight into the main application. Uh, so we're going to walk through how you can set up a process where you can do that. So as always we're going to start off by generating a new Ionic 2 application. Uh, so we're going to run Ionic start and let's call this one async login. Uh, we'll just use the blank uh, template and make sure to supply the b2 flag to generate an Ionic 2 application. So we'll let that run. Okay, so that's finished generating now. Uh, now we're just going to switch into that project. And we're going to generate a login page. So by default, the blank template that we're using only has a home page, uh, which we're going to use for our uh, the main part of our uh, application. And so we also want to generate a login page uh, that we're going to send users to the first time uh, they open the application, but not on subsequent visits. Uh, so we're not going to be coding that particular logic uh, in this tutorial. We're just going to walk through how to actually do the process of checking uh, something, uh, seeing if they're allowed to access the main application, and then switching to that view. Uh, perhaps in a different tutorial, we'll cover how you might actually go about uh, storing whether or not a user um, should be authenticated. So we're going to generate that login page by running Ionic G page login. And once that is generated, we're also going to uh, generate a provider. And this provider is going to be uh, what we're going to use to check for authentication. Uh, so it's just going to be a fake login check, basically. We're going to create a set timeout. It's going to wait for three seconds and then tell us whether or not the user should be authenticated. Uh, in a real world scenario, you would, of course, uh, check on some server that's actually checking their credentials. So we're just going to run Ionic G Provider Auth. So now we have everything uh, that we need set up. We're going to open up the project and get to work. I've got the project open now. And the first thing we're going to look at is the, uh, the root uh, component for the application, which is in the app folder here. So it's app.component.ts. So you can see here it's setting up the home page as the root page. So that means when we start the application, that's what's going to get loaded first. So what we want to do is add some kind of check in here that will say uh, whether we should go to the home page first or whether we should go to the login page. Uh, but before we get to that, we're going to do a few other things first. Uh, since we've generated this new page here, as you can see on the left, we've got the login uh, page we generated and we also have the auth provider. So to be able to use those, we're going to have to set them up in the app.module.ts file. So I'm going to have to import both of those here. So I'm going to import the login page first. And also the auth provider that we generated. I've added one too many dots just there. And the login page is going to need to be added to the declarations array and also to the entry components array. And uh, the auth provider that we created needs to be added to providers. And so now that's set up and we can use that wherever we need to in the application. So let's just serve our uh, application now. We'll run Ionic serve and see what we have so far. This is what our application looks uh, like right now. So it's just that home page uh, that was automatically generated and that's what's being loaded. Uh, the login page uh, hasn't been uh, added at all here yet. So what we want to do now is work on that uh, root component and add in that check to see whether we should go to the home page or to the login page. Uh, so I'm actually going to jump into the provider first. Uh, we're going to set this up to create a fake login check for us. So we're going to add a function here called login and that's going to return a promise and we're just going to use a set timeout here 
and that timeout's going to resolve uh, with true to indicate that the user is logged in and that's going to happen after, let's say, three seconds. So we put 3,000 milliseconds there. So this is uh, an asynchronous function here. When login is called, um, it creates this promise. Uh, it's going to uh, do that check, which in this case is just, all it does is return true, or resolve, uh, makes the promise resolve with true. Um, usually here is where you would instead hit your server with a HTTP request or something like that. It would do the check on the server to see if the user is authenticated, then return that value. Uh, but all we're in interested in is creating that process that allows us to switch pages. So we just want something that will uh, wait for a few seconds to simulate doing something and then give us our answer. So now that we have that, we can jump back into our root component and we're going to need to import the login page in here as well. And we're also going to import that auth provider. So even though we've set these up, uh, it should be providers auth. Um, yeah, even though we've set these up already in the module file, we still need to import them where we want to use them. So we've got a root page set to home page, which is fine for now. We'll leave that as is, uh, but we're going to add that check in here uh, for uh, whether or not the user is authenticated. So we're going to inject our auth provider. We'll just call it auth, and then we're going to run this dot auth dot login, uh, which is that function we just created here. And then once that promise resolves, which we can handle with then, uh, we can get the result from that, which we'll just call uh, is logged in. And then depending on what that value is, we want to either go to the home page or to the logged in page. So we'll say if is logged in, we want to uh, go to the home page. So we'll set the root page to home page. Uh, otherwise, we'll go to um, the login page. And we don't want this to be a uh, home page by default. We don't want it to be anything just yet. Uh, so we're just going to give that a type of any, so we can assign any type of data to it. Um, and we're going to wait and see what happens with this login call before we set anything. Now, it used to be that this didn't work this way. Uh, if you didn't set the root page immediately and instead relied on some asynchronous function like this, uh, the root page wouldn't be set in time and it would cause uh, issues. Uh, so what happens here, uh, as we're going through this uh, function here, the app's loading in, it makes this call to the login function, uh, which is asynchronous because we're um, relying on a promise here. Uh, so it doesn't just stop here, wait to find out what the answer to this is, and then set the root page and then continue. Instead, it makes uh, makes a call to this function that gets scheduled for later. Uh, basically, when, when there's time to perform that check, it will happen. But otherwise, the application will just keep running through whatever code there is. Uh, but it seems now that Ionic does allow you to do it in this way, you can just change this root page variable, uh, and it will change to whatever page you want. Uh, so this is okay to do now, but we don't want to set that home page initially, otherwise it's going to display the home page first and then it's going to switch. Instead we just want to display a blank page, wait, and then display either the home page or the login page. Now this is going to look, uh, it's not going to look the best, we'll take a look uh, at what it looks like. So I'll save that and we'll jump back into the browser. Now uh, we have a error looks like. I've forgotten something. Uh, in this um, auth provider, I should have return new promise. Uh, I'll save that. Hopefully that fixes that problem. Okay, that seems to be working now. Uh, I'll just refresh that again so you can see what actually happened. So I'll refresh the page and it's kind of just white for a little while, it's completely blank and then the home page pops in. Uh, that's because uh, we have this returning true. Uh, if we were to return false instead to indicate the user is not logged in, 
it should take us to the login page instead. And it does. The problem with that is it doesn't look very good. It looks like our app's just taking a really long time to load. Um, that call to the server took, uh, well, the simulated call to the server took three seconds. Uh, the point is that it doesn't look very good. It looks like the app's slow, and that's not going to be a good user experience. So we want to indicate to the user that something is happening here. And to do that, we're going to make use of Ionic's uh, loading overlay. So if I jump into the documentation here, go into components, and you'll find this loading component. So what this does, I think I can show you on yeah, the example here. So it just pops up an overlay that indicates that something's loading, something's happening. And this blocks user interaction, which means they have to wait. Uh, they can't interact with the app while it's happening, which in this case is what we want. So I'm just going to import the loading controller into the root component here. And I'm also going to set that up and inject it into the constructor. And I'm also going to take the example function they have here, present loading, which handles creating the loading overlay. Uh, but instead of uh, just creating a local reference to it here with a let, uh, I want to control when that loading overlay is hidden through the constructor here. Uh, so instead we're going to create a member variable for uh, loader and instead we're going to set this dot loader uh, equals the uh, loading overlay that we're creating and then we'll also call this dot loader dot present there and this will allow us to control when to hide it uh, so we don't want to automatically hide it after three seconds there so we'll get rid of that and instead in this function here uh, when this promise resolves then we want to hide the overlay. So we'll say this dot loader dot dismiss and when that's triggered the loading overlay will disappear. So let's save that now and we'll see what it looks like. Of course nothing happens because I didn't actually make a call to present loading yet. Uh, let me just do that before we call the promise. So we'll do this we want to pop that up right away. We'll call this dot present loading Save that, and now let's try it again. Okay, so we have the loading overlay pop up right away. It says, please wait, and then we go to the login page. Um, we'll change that to something like authenticating, uh, which more accurately represents what is happening. And uh, we'll change that back to true to indicate a successful login. Take a look at what happens. So the authenticating overlay pops up and then we go straight to the logged in view. Uh, refresh that again so you can see from the start what happens. Overlay pops up right away, logged in view. Uh, so that's a pretty nice uh, transition from uh, authentication to the, to the logged in view or to the login view as opposed to just displaying a blank page where the user doesn't know what's happening. Uh, if you would like, alternatively, you could uh, you could add some um, styling to your app, maybe so it's not a white page. You might want uh, to have a picture in the background, so it's kind of like a splash screen. Or you could even, if you like, in here set um, that root page by default uh, to be the login page. Um, so then that's going to display that in the background whilst it's authenticating, and then go to the appropriate page. So if I save that and take a look. You can see the login page is uh, already in the background there whilst it's authenticating, and if it's logged in, it switches to the main page. Uh, but if the user wasn't authenticated, then it would just stay on that login page. Uh, so that's another way you could do it if you prefer, if you think uh, that looks better. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial. I hope that you enjoyed this one, and that's a reasonably clear and straightforward process for authenticating users and automatically logging them into your application. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.